What's good everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zamir from XC Tunes. In this video, I'm gonna give you five more music production or music composition tips that you can use in Cubase 14, all right? So if this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, smash the like button and share this video to everybody you know. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, the first tip is helpful for music producers and music composers, especially if you are composing for orchestral music, right? Uh, I like to use spectrotone chart. If you guys don't know what that is, it, it is a chart that allows me to see which are the instruments that sounds good together. For instance, let's say I want to layer violin and a piccolo, all right? So that chart will show me which range of violin and which range of piccolo sounds good together or if it doesn't sound good at all. You know, for instance, there are some, there are some instruments that if you layer them, it, it will not layer well, you know, it, there'll be a lot of contrast. So it's not a good idea to layer instruments that sounds completely contrast uh, unless if the, that is the color that you want, all right? So I use this chart a lot. So in order for me to read the charts, the charts is actually showing me the MIDI note numbers, all right? So in Cubase, there's a way for you to see the MIDI note numbers easily, okay? Let me show you an example. I'm gonna go ahead and create MIDI tracks. Okay, so let's just name them real quick. Violins, um, let's copy them. Viola, cello, and now let's have maybe, like I said before, piccolo, all right? So this is gonna be, so this is, these are the string part and this is the piccolo part, and I'm gonna just create some MIDI tracks here. So when I click on this MIDI track, it's gonna open up the key editor. You can see on the left side here at C3 slash 60. 60 is basically the MIDI note numbers, and if I, enter a note here, you can see the number is also showing up here. So you notice that there are no numbers here, right? But don't worry, if you have a note here, you can see the numbers is already appearing here as well. So if I'm looking at the spectrotron chart, so if, if, if it says that MIDI note 60 to 70 is a good number to layer the piccolo or any other instruments, I can just quickly read them and and score easily, all right? So in order for you to set this up, it's very easy. All you have to do is go to edit and go to preference and go to, under this event display, go to chords and pitches. And right here below this pitch notation, you can come here and select MIDI plus MIDI note number, all right? So this is really helpful for me, especially when I'm doing film scoring. Or sometimes I even want to see the MIDI note numbers for 808, for in instance, let's say I'm producing a beat. I want to see which are the best range for my 808, right? So I can go ahead and, you know, enter my note here. Let's say this is an 808 track. So 24, if it's too low, so I'll, I'll try to bring this up and play around with it within the range, right? It is really useful, guys. So this is one of the tip that is really helpful for those composers and music producers, all right? Okay, so that's the tip number one. Let's move on to the second tip for the day. Okay, so for the second tip is about lyric track. Okay, let me be clear, we don't have lyric track. However, we can use the score editor to use the lyric features there, right? So I'm gonna just add some notes here. All right. Okay, so let's say this is my lyric right now and I want to add my lyrics to the score editor. All right, what I have to do is, obviously I have to go to the score editor and just go click on this and open score editor. Now you can see the notes here, right? So this is my, this is my melody and I want to put the lyric on top of this. So what you have to do is, okay, I'm gonna click on this text and go to this button here above. This is for lyric track and click on this first note here and this is gonna pop up right above. And I'm gonna go and copy my lyric and paste them. So the first note is subscribe. And now 
second note is going to be there's two right the second second syllable and then the third one is going to be ecstasy so what i do is i just press Control v so i'm going to go ahead and do that again Control c to copy i'm going to click on this note and paste them Control v one two three so it's going to just write the ly lyrics for me all right but you notice that subscribe is actually a two syllable word so right now this one note needs to be subs and the second note is going to be scribe right so subscribe so how do we do that i'm going to go back to the notepad again and i'm going to give a space in between these these words so subscribe to x t c tunes so let's say if i want tunes to have let's say i want tunes to have two different notes right tunes so something like that right so i can actually separate them in between as well so i'm going to copy the note now and yeah let's just delete them okay if you want to delete it just press the delete button on your keyboard so now i'm going to go ahead and click on this v i'm going to go ahead and click on this button and i'm going to press the note control v v v and so on so now you can see subscribe to ecstasy tunes right so that's how you can do the lyric in cubase all right let's say you have two words and this is the first verse and then you want to add the second verse within the, within this melody right so you can do that as well what you have to do is you go and click on this again go to v and click on this note and now press the arrow down button on your keyboard and then now you have another section which then you can go ahead and copy and paste so let me copy this it's that simple right so that's lyric track or lyric features in cubase for you so that's the second tip for you let's move on to the third tip okay the third tips is very easy so let's say you have a couple of events here and if you want to click on the first event and if you want to click on the last event here notice you can't do that right you need to select all of them like so right okay I don't like to use this way I don't like that actually so what I do is I like to click on the first event right and then press shift and at the same time press the arrow right key on your keyboard and it's going to help me select the subsequent event within that track right so if let's say i want to i have already selected this one if and if i want to go to the left i can do that as well press shift and the left arrow key and i can select all of them and if you want to undo selection you can just press shift and go back again right it's that simple this will also work with the audio track so let me create an audio track real quick okay this is the uh, audio event so i'm going to click on this audio event now and i'm going to press shift and select the track i can unselect the track as well with the arrow keys right it's very very useful I've been asked this question a lot. I didn't have time to add this tip in my previous video. So now today is the day. So that's tip number three. Let's move on to tip number four. Okay, so the fourth tip is basically, uh, it's just a preference. Okay, sometimes when I'm looking at this computer screen for too long, my eyes get tired, right? So I want to change some of the colors a bit. So what I usually do is I'll change this uh, locator's color. So let me just go to edit and preference and go to transport so you can see here this is the cursor and if you click on this button you can you can actually change the color of the cursor okay but before you do any changes make sure to save your preference settings look at, you can see here i have a a preference that i've already saved as a preset so if i've messed up anything i can go back to my own preference settings right so please remember to do that so let's go and change this now to maybe a red color so I'm going to hit OK, apply. Now you can see that this is actually 
in color red, right? That's cool. If you go back to the preference now, you can also increase the width of this. So let me hit apply. You can see now it's kind of big right now, which is cool. However, I only use this when I'm getting tired. All right, so let's go back to the preference now. And then you can also click on this show outlines. Okay, now it's show outline is enabled, right? So watch what happens when I disable it. It will look like this. So this, if this is how you prefer the cursor to be, you can keep this way, or you can have it have an outline as well. Okay, whichever way that you prefer. Now that's the fourth tip. Let's move on to the last tip of the day, and that is enabling VST two. I get asked a lot of times how to enable the VST two. So all you have to do is go to Plugin Manager and you can see here that the VST2 is now enabled. If, if I click on this, it's going to disable the VST2. I won't be able to use my MPC and all that, right? So that sucks. I don't want to do that. I want to have my MPC right here, some of my other VST2 plugins as well. In case if you want to use any of your VST2 plugins, please remember to go and enable them right here. I don't know for how long we are going to have this option to use the VST2 in Cubase. Hopefully forever. <laughs> if not, I hope some of my favorite plugins developers will change the VST, will change the format to VST3 in the future. Okay guys, so that's it for today. If you guys find this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notification, smash the like button and share this video to everybody you know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.